Aloha, Hawaii. I'm Wendy Lowe, and I'm one of your buddies as we journey to take your health back. We are coming to you live from downtown Honolulu from the studios of Think Tech Hawaii. Think Tech Hawaii hosts about 45 very diverse topics of interest each month. Today, our topic of discussion will be on take back your health with your fork. Life is so much better when you love the food that loves you back. Isn't that interesting? Today we'll be discussing some of the keys to being able to truly take our health back. This is so exciting. What I would like you to take away from our discussion today will be by tapping into the power of commitment, choice, architecture, and connection, we can enjoy an improved quality of life and fulfill our potential. Today, we are very honored to welcome a remarkable woman who walks this talk and who has made a definite impact on me with my health journey. Her name is Timory Hagenberger, the nutrition professor. I met Timory as she was an honored guest invited to speak at Hawaii's Vegan Society. I was so excited to meet Timory and even more excited when I invited her to my home and she and her husband said yes. I showed off my tower garden grown kale and impressed her with my abundant supply of Hawaii's best kale. We've since been in touch, especially because I purchased her treasure cookbook, which I use regularly, weekly actually, to introduce a plant-based diet to so many people of Hawaii. Please help me welcome Timory. So aloha Timory. Aloha. Yes, just really quickly, just tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, my name is Timory Hagenberger, and I am a nutrition professor. That's my full-time job. I also am a registered dietitian, and I'm an exercise physiologist, um, certified through the American College of Sports Medicine. But more important than that stuff is that I love food. <laughs> Absolutely love it. And I grew up with Italian family, and we showed love with food. And at the time, we just didn't realize that the food we love didn't love us back. <laughs> so now I know even better how to help others begin to love the food that actually takes care of them. That is um, and so that important. Them. So important because people just eat whatever is put in front of them and they have no idea of consequence. But you actually will share with us. Um, the differences of loving food and having the, that food love us makes a big difference in our lives. So, Timory, I want to start off by asking you, what do you tell your students about luck? Oh, yes. Well, <laughs> we talk about luck and we talk about the idea that the harder you work, it seems the luckier you get. And when you take some time to plan, you can actually be successful by design. So I don't want them to have to rely on luck. I want them to be successful by design. And there's just a little forethought and getting out of their comfort zone so that they can learn new things and how to enjoy foods that they may not even have thought they enjoyed. It's actually a little funny. When I talk about a certain food, sometimes my students will say, I hear them in the back, ew. And I say, oh, no, we don't say ew. We say, <laughs> Hmm, that sounds interesting. Yes, I don't yes. believe I've had that prepared in a way I've enjoyed it yet. Wow. And they all kind of giggle. And I say, no, seriously, you could be missing out on a food that turns into a favorite just because your previous experience wasn't ideal. Wow. So that's why I like to show my students how, not just why. So, eating this food. <laughs> you're not just a food professor, but you're also a psychologist because you're actually teaching them how to think, you know, rethink life. And this goes yeah. for not just food, but in many things that they're gonna attempt in their early years of life. And this is so key. Through it throughout the whole life. Today, mm -hmm. we were actually talking about the power, which, well, we were, let's get to the, the information that I wanna to share today, because yes. there's so many powers, and there's I don't so think- There's so much. We're gonna be able to so get let me just start by asking you, when, yeah. When did you make the connection between food and love? When I was tiny. I wrote my first recipe when I was six or seven years old, and it was for cinnamon toast, <laughs> just in case. I didn't know, right, how to 
do that again. But I have gone on to just become completely enthralled. I work so hard at what I do and I love it more every single day. I have an article that I write every month for our little local newspaper. I did a series, a podcast series. I have, um, I do a lot of TV work, which I'll show you. And that is so helpful because all of those my students can access and everybody in the world now because of the internet can access these gems at their own you know, on their own time and really start to make this happen for their own lives. Wow, that's so powerful. I mean, so like you said, social media, the media, all the streams of, of opportunities for us to share this message and to encourage them in a very positive way. So how can everyone benefit from the work that you do on TV? I know you, you mentioned you do a lot of TV and as we are doing today, just getting the word out. Sharing yes, so I do, I put a slide out there for you to share that shows I do a monthly segment right now on a Studio 40 TV. It's a live show. And then I do segments through California Bountiful. And with the Studio 40, I get in the station and I show them how to prepare easy recipes. For the California Bountiful, we actually start either at a farmer's market or at the grocery store. And I focus on one piece of produce and show how to choose and then how to take care of it and then how to cook it. So it flashes back to me in the kitchen, preparing a recipe with a given piece of produce. And I've done over 50 of those different segments. And so they're all available on my website, thenutritionprofessor.com. So anybody can learn and then try it at home. Wow, this is great news. I mean, I'm thinking if, you know, I'll talk to our tech guy here, Eric, I'm going to say, hey, Eric, maybe she can have her own show and just run all your videos. And we have 50 <laughs> shows. Wendy can take a break. But <laughs> so what we're going to do is we're going to try to get you on as much as possible so that we can share your heart and your passion for what you are doing. And I can hear it. I can hear your heart. And so this is your success tool for reaching others and getting the message into their hearts. But how could someone benefit from visiting your website? I know that you are very active on that as well. Yes. So I write an article each month and I feature a recipe. So this last month in January, I did a seven layer dip which is a favorite for our family, not just during the Super Bowl, but during any time of the year. And there's all different varieties and variations that you can make. Um, and there you also have access to the Foodie Bar Way, which is my cookbook that you were talking about in the intro. Um, that is, there's a, the little caricature that you can see on my website. She's in the book as well. And so I tell my students, no, you can't live with me. And no, I can't live with you, but you can take this little one home and she can help you <laughs> in order to be more confident in the kitchen. Well, this is my cookbook and I brought it here with me today. And I, as I said, I have it dog-eared according to what recipes I have used and I enjoy. And you know, we make a little bit of variations with the local diets here, but everything is pretty much plant strong. And what you're teaching me here is so valuable because I very much use it and I share this book. The only thing is I have to track it that it comes back to me or now I'll know that I can just send them to your website, right? Yes. Definitely. Okay. I have a print copy and an ebook version. I know a lot of people like to use it on their iPad, um, you know, or their laptop. And so it makes it easy. So there's both versions available. But that's the whole premise behind the Foodie Bar way. And I think we'll get to that a little bit later. Yeah, I'm so excited. So how can someone find the power to truly take their health back? I mean, you just nailed it with the topic or the title of my talk. That, you know, taking your health back with Wendy, and now we got take your health right. back with us both. So I'm so excited. How do you how do you teach this? All right. So there are many different powers to tap into. Mm -hmm. So there are what I wanted to focus on with our little bit of short time we have today is to tap into the power of commitment, of choice architecture, and of connection. 
So let's start with the first one, the power of commitment. Um, so this is interesting because a lot of people end up getting stuck in indecision. Oh, I don't know what to do. There's so many different diets out there. I'm not sure which one I should follow. And so and so's doing this one. And then I have an uncle that's doing this and they lost weight on this. And so they don't do anything because there's just too many choices. Right. But when you look at the predominance of evidence, we see that whole food plant based is the way to go. And the biggest thing you can do for yourself is then to make that commitment. So if we pull up the slide, I wanted to highlight a couple of things regarding the commitment. Um, like I said, that once you commit, then you can feel peace and freedom because you're not going back and forth. That indecision, I don't know about you, Wendy, but when I am struggling making a decision, it's exhausting. It is, it is. You know, and, and you, just, oh. you, you hit it right on the nail. I mean, the commitment part, just saying, you know, like um, every year, everyone starts the new year off with resolutions. That's kind of like right. attempting a commitment. But of course, I would say 90, 95% of them fail in that commitment. And so mm -hmm. I think what we'll, we'll need to do is kind of just train the brain and give them mm -hmm. the right tools the, to help them to decide. Like you said, it's a lifestyle. We're not mm -hmm. asking anyone to go on a diet. We're not asking them no. none of that. That's the wrong word. No. The wrong Absolutely. word. Absolutely. Right. Yes. And so we just no. want to change or have them think about lifestyles mm -hmm. and choices of lifestyle. Yes. And when, if you look back at, we'll bring that slide back up. When you make that decision and you feel that peace and freedom, mm -hmm. then your mind can shift from why it won't work, you know, and all the different excuses to how it will. And that's just how the brain works. When you put a question in your mind and the focus is how are we going to make this work, then all of a sudden answers come out of the woodwork. Right. You know, I mentioned to my students, if, you know, you came across a situation where there was a child stuck under a car, you could sit there and do all the calculations about the pressure on the skull and how it's probably not going to, but you don't. You do anything you can to figure out a way to lift that car up and you get very creative. And that's how it works when you make a commitment. And it doesn't have to be, oh my gosh, I'm never going to, you know, make any changes. But it's right now, I am all in. Right. And I, I think that. that's really key that I'm all in and that I have a big why. Right. I love that. Um, I love that explanation because when you make the commitment and you see and you feel the results, and then let's say they go, take a backward step and then they feel mm -hmm. the results of that. And that's when yeah. the commitment becomes solidified, that it now becomes lifestyle. But they need to take that yeah. forward step. And some do take the back, but then they can realize yeah. for themselves. But that's so key to Marie. And, you know, right now we're just going to take a, a 60 second break and we'll come back right. with more absolute lifestyle um, tips that will help us through our journey as we take our health back. Aloha. Aloha, I'm Lillian Kumik, host of Lillian's Vegan World, the show where we talk about veganism and the plant-based diet located in Honolulu, Hawaii. I'm a vegan chef and cooking instructor, and I have lots of uh, information to share with you about how awesome this plant-based diet is. So do tune in every second Thursday from 1 p.m. Aloha. Aloha, Hawaii, and welcome back to Think Tech Hawaii with Timory Hagenberger, the nutrition professor. So she's here just sharing a little bit of tips and tidbits 
from her experiences as she coaches and trains and works with the students at her college there. So she is actually a working professor, a working mother, with a lot of great knowledge that she wants to share to just help direct our thinking so we can make better and healthier choices. So before we went on break, we talked a little bit about making the commitment and how important it is to making the commitment and then not only just making the commitment, but sticking to the commitment. So Tamari, maybe you can um, refresh our minds and take us back to that commitment and then the why. Yes, so the idea was once you made a commitment, then you found peace and freedom because you could just take a deep breath and move forward. And this idea that once you tell your brain, I am all in, then you start to see answers coming to you. You start to see creative ideas coming to you because you have that space that it's not just cluttered with indecision. But we also left talking about the why. So the why cannot be something like weight loss. The why has to be more important. The why has to be something that basically brings you to tears. I mean, in order to change your lifestyle, it needs to be something really big. And um, even though this may sound silly, I have 17 year old students and males at this who will say, when I ask, why is it important for you to be healthy? And they say, because I want to meet my great grandkids. And that just blows me away. I mean, to wow. be that young and to have that, you know, foresight. But mm. there are many people who they can't live the life that they are meant to because their body is holding them back. Right. And I never want that. I want people to be able to do whatever that they would like based on, you know, choices they've made, but not because... Well, I couldn't, um, you know, uh, let me give you a quick example. I was at a conference on the coast of California and we, one of the activities we were supposed to go out to the beach and walk and talk with um, one of the other people, like partner up and walk and talk. And there was a woman there that had a boot on her foot because she had an injury related and it was getting worse. It was related to diabetes and not taking care of herself. And so she had to, she paid the same amount that we all did to be there, but she had to sit inside and couldn't get sand in her boot and couldn't get out there and experience that. Not because she didn't want to, but because of the choices that she had made was hold, were holding her back. Wow. So that's a big important. why. It's a big and, why. Yes. Yeah. And, and what it was as well was for the rest of you to see the quality of life, you know, mm -hmm. right there and for you to solidify your commitment and your why. Mm -hmm. You know, we have a lot of that here in Hawaii where we can we see that daily. You know, here in Hawaii, mm -hmm. we have over 600,000 diabetics here in mm -hmm. Hawaii. So we are faced with that issue daily. And so I'm sure a lot of the keiki and the great grandchildren, they see that. And so that's why mm -hmm. maybe the statement comes from a young teen that I want to be around to see my great grandchildren. And that's powerful. And know that everybody here wishes that they could be there. Mm -hmm. Everybody is like, why is a place that people save up for years and years and years to be able to come and vacation mm -hmm. and to be there and to be not able to enjoy the paradise that Hawaii is, is just sad. We that would be that. a great why so that we we should maintain and you know look after our bodies so we can enjoy all the beauty inside and outside especially and then the beautiful water and just to feel oh the water goodness. therapy yes. yes so you know moving so on let's, to, mm -hmm. yes the next one the power of choice architecture yes now you may think what in the world is that <laughs> that is all about making the easiest options also the best so if you were locked up in an ice cream shop, it doesn't matter how good your willpower was, at some point <laughs> you'd be eating that ice cream. Not because your body needed it, not because you had some kind of deficiency, but because it was in your face, right? Right, right. 
So, you know, sometimes I'll talk to my students and they'll say, oh, I went to a party and it was so hard because there weren't any options. And I just felt so out of, you know, out of place. And I felt depressed because there weren't foods that I could eat. And, but that's not because their body was craving the junk. It was because the junk was just everywhere. Right. They could just as easily been at my house doing a foodie bar and all the options were on the table and all of them were fantastic. So sometimes I hear people saying, oh, it's just so hard and I just can't stop the cravings. But if we have it in our face, right. then of course it's gonna be very difficult. And you know, when I saw that slide, when I was reviewing this and I saw the slide and it said exactly that, put the bad food away because it's, if it's in your face, you're going to eat it. So I looked around yeah. my desk and I have a bag of macadamia nuts and that's my okay. naughty, my naughty healthy snack. I say, I know it's, it's not the best, but it is a natural snack. It's a, it was raw um, and it were, they're bits. So instead of putting the whole nuts in my mouth, I take the bits and I snack on that and it fills me up and it satisfies the need for something to be munching on as I'm working and working and working. So is that what you meant? Oh, absolutely. We have research that shows depending on how far away a candy bowl is, if you're at work, mm -hmm. you know, they'll show you if it's covered or if it's glass, if it's on your desk or your neighbor's desk, all of that impacts how much snacking you do. So it's not that your body needs it. It's a it's in your face. Wow. But what I want to focus on too is to really value, like what you were just explaining, value the wisdom that we have from our experience. So you know where you get into trouble on your desk, right? So you can take that knowledge and turn it into wisdom. So we know a lot of things, but wisdom means being able to put it into practice. So one of the suggestions that I have is to use a very powerful technique called if then or implementation intentions. So you create situations that you've experienced in the past. That's the if. So if I um, bring, let's see, let's see, if I have to miss lunch, then I will have some hummus and carrots in the refrigerator to snack on you are just extremely specific about the scenario and then you have the then which will let you know ahead of time what your course of action is going to be so it takes away that commitment that um indecision again mm -hmm. so i have students who um they will they say well every time i go out i end up spending money on fast food so their if then is if I'm leaving and I'm worried about spending money, I leave my ATM card at home. So those types of implementation intentions can increase success so much. If you have family members or parties that you're going to, mm -hmm. you know it's gonna happen. And so if I go to a party, then I will bring you know, cowboy salad from my book or something along those lines. That way you've already thought about the situation. Wow, that's powerful. And you know, the more we listen to this and we can reprogram our brains, it'll help us a lot. So one of the first steps I did about 10 years ago as I started the health journey, I made a commitment not to buy livestock. So I don't buy any, I have not bought in 10 years, pork, beef or chicken. Okay, so mm -hmm. I've made that first commitment to not. So while I'm at home, I've never cooked it in the last 10 years. And so that mm. uh, allows a lot of the temptation right at my fingertips. And I knew that right. was the direction I wanted to go. Um, the other part of uh, the weakness for me would be the sugars. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, we're pretty much, um, a lot of us are addicted to the sugars. And right. um, so that's why I, I try to, I do peanut butters. I do nuts. Mm -hmm. And I, mm -hmm. I do a lot of hummus. I used to make hummus by the gallons. And I give yeah. it out as gifts. When people come to my home, I pass them right. a container of hummus so that they can have that luxury of that pro product in their home, in their icebox, taking away a dip or something of that value and replacing it with right. a bean dip. No, that's excellent. And whole nuts and 
are, are a much better choice even than the nut butters because our we don't we're not able to chew the nuts tiny enough and so some of that fat actually just goes right through us so but there's a lot i can go on and on about the science but we don't want to get caught up in that right now yeah. i want to make sure we get to our last um power and we're, i don't know how much time we'll have but let's try to go to our uh, we have our some last time power, well the connection. We want to talk about, yeah, why is connection so important? So we are designed as social creatures, right? And it's so important that we work together because while people may not think that their choices individually will make a difference, they do. And our collective power can create a new normal. We can have access to items that at the grocery store we do now that we didn't have 10 years ago that are very, very accessible because we have a demand for it. And there's a whole variety, for example, of the, the non-dairy milks that were never even right. available. And now they're all over. So we can really create a new normal. And that's what I would love to see. But this connection is critical for um, long-term sustainability. And it may not be your same group that you have connected with in the past. Some people will be interested in making these changes, but there's also lots of other people that are excited to make these changes that you may not be connected with yet. Mm -hmm. And that's the most exciting part about this is yet, because they're out there. And a lot of the response that I hear is, you know, they've just got diagnosed with an ailment and they want to make the right choice. They start, but there's no one there to hold them accountable. And I think mm -hmm. that's very important to have your circle around you that will help you through this journey. And um, that's yes. why using you on our show today will help us to broaden the scope of reaching people. Okay, definitely, so, definitely. So I, I wanna, wanna mm -hmm. yeah, go ahead. So I wanna ask you, can we have it all? Yes, we can have it all. We can enjoy every single bite and take back our health. So I wanted to mention to you, so my cookbook, The Foodie Bar Way, one of the main pieces in it is the fact that we can set up foodie bars that are for like potluck style. Yes. And so this brings the community, so that connection idea. So it's the foodie bar way is like something where it's as if Chipotle met forks over knives with a sprinkle of the flavor Bible. So think about all different options that you'd set up for some kind of a taco bar. And that way, everybody gets to make their exact perfect plate, but they can experiment with all types of the ingredients. And another piece of the book is that it encourages people to do what I call our cook togethers. Wow. So instead of going out, they stay in and make, let's say you were mentioning hummus, do right. a hummus showdown. Right. So that was amazing. You know, I mean, Timory, we could just keep talking to you again and again. And I will have you back on because you have so many brilliant ideas that people can listen to and, and actually put into action. But unfortunately, our time has run out. And so I have to wrap it up. And I'm going to say, right. will you come back and join us one more time? Yes. Yes. Absolutely. And I say mahalo to you and mahalo for mahalo. sharing your heart with all of us here in Think Tech Hawaii. So for now, aloha. Aloha, everyone. Aloha.